evening. Is everybody? I hope everybody's had a very good Sunday. Uh, we, we had a really good service this morning, and I'm confident y'all had a great service also. Let's just, uh, let's just stand and let's just invite the Holy Spirit in this place. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we can have rain on the outside, Lord. And, Lord, I, we can have the rain that, of the Holy Ghost come down in here, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would just move upon us, Lord. Lord, you know our needs, Lord. We, you know what we have right now, Lord, to offer. And, and, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that as people come into this place, Lord, that they'll have the desire, Lord, to seek you, Lord, and to seek the Holy Ghost and, and, ex and just expect a great move of God, Lord. I just pray that you just continue to move upon our worship, Lord, move upon the, the Word of God, Lord. Lord, just have your way, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. to be in the service, glad to be in the service, glad to be in the service one more time, one more time, he didn't have to let me be here, he didn't have to let me be here, glad to be in the service one more time. One more time, one more time, he didn't have to let me be here, no, he didn't have to let me be here, so glad to be in the service, one more time, I'm glad to be in the service, so glad to be in the service. 
service one more time. One more time. He didn't have to let me be here. No, he didn't have to let me be here. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. I'm so glad to be in the presence of God once again on this Sunday night. Hallelujah. There's so many other places that we could be, but we chose to be in the house of the Lord to honor and to glorify his name. When you praise him, deliverance will come. When you praise him, the battle is won. When you praise him, So keep looking up and keep on praising God. When you praise Him, deliverance will come. When you praise Him, the battle is won. When you praise Him, His love abounds. So keep looking up and keep on praising God. When you praise Him, deliverance will come. When you praise Him, the battle is won. When you praise Him, His love abounds. So keep looking up, so keep looking up, so keep looking up, and keep on praising God. When you praise Him, deliverance will come. When you praise Him, the battle is won. When you praise Him, His love abounds. So keep looking up and keep on praising God. When you praise Him, deliverance will come. When you praise Him, the battle is won when you praise him his love abounds so keep looking up and keep on praising god when you praise him deliverance will come when you praise him the battle is won when you praise him his love abounds so keep looking up, so keep looking up, so keep looking up, so keep looking up, and keep on praising God. When you praise Him, deliverance will come. When you praise Him, the battle is won. When you praise Him, His love abounds. So keep looking up and keep on praising God. When you praise Him, deliverance will come. When you praise Him, the battle is won. When you praise Him, His love abounds. So keep looking up and keep on praising God. When you so keep looking up, so keep looking up, so keep looking up, and keep on praising God. Just keep on praising God. Hallelujah, that's what we come in his house to do, so you might as well do it. Hallelujah, I'm not ashamed to praise and to lift up my hands tonight because of all that Jesus is to me. Who are hurting? We're a harbor for those who are lost. Sometimes it's not always easy bearing Calvary's cross. We 
been ridiculed by those who don't know him and mocked by those who don't believe still i love standing up for my jesus cost of all that he's done for me that's why i am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of jesus christ no i am not afraid to be counted but i'm willing to give moment his hand has held mercy for all the love he's shown all my life a simple thanks doesn't say how i'm feeling i get tears in my eyes so as for me i'm gonna keep on believing and the one who's been so faithful to me i'm not out to please this world around me i've got my mind on eternity that's why i am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of jesus christ no i am not afraid to be counted but i'm willing to give my life see i'm ready to be all he wants me to be give up the wrong ashamed of the gospel no i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ i've got too much behind me to let this world blind me to some he's a name but to me he's my everything i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ we're an anchor for those who are hurting we're a harbor for those who are lost sometimes it's not always easy bearing calvary's cross we've been ridiculed by those who don't know him and mocked by those who don't believe still i love standing up for my jesus cost of all that he's done for me that's why i am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of jesus christ no i am not afraid to be counted but i'm willing to give my life see i'm ready to be all he wants me to be give up the wrong for the Of the gospel of 
Jesus Christ. I've got too much behind me to let this world to me he's just there. But to me he's my everything. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sing that part again. Got too much behind me to let this world blind me. To some he's a name. But to me he's my everything. I am not ashamed of the gospel. No, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you feel that way tonight, will you say a big old hearty amen? Amen. They're trying to attack the name of Jesus. They're trying to minimize his importance, even question his existence. But I'm still not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ tonight. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. (laughs) Hallelujah. Come on up. We didn't get to choir this morning. Let's see if we can get to it tonight. Amen. Let's come and make a joyful noise unto the Lord as we sing tonight. Songs that remind us. Songs that tell a story. Songs that challenge us to keep on keeping on. Keep it in the faith. Let's sing together tonight. Maybe I need to preach about getting saved tonight. Hallelujah. How many is ready to fly away? Amen. All right, you're forgiven. Now you've got to sing. Hallelujah. Let's try. Amen. Thank you. 
Pastor Renfro, we can say, here I am, amen, 240.
the room is caught up yon. Oh, when the room is caught up yonder, when the roll is caught up yonder. Oh, sing it one more time. Oh, when the roll is caught up yonder, when the roll is caught up yonder, when the roll. Is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. Looking forward to being there. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Welcome again to service tonight. Trust that you've had a good afternoon. And uh, I've been praising him all afternoon. Amen. Making sure he knows I'm one of the ones that come back, not one of the nine that doesn't. Don't forget about tonight after service, we'll have our cake auction will move to the fellowship hall they'll be ready for us back there this coming weekend is a out a fresh and outpouring weekend uh mini revival if you will friday night saturday night and sunday and uh, friday night we'll have the mass youth choir from riverdale 50 plus students uh, that'll be singing and i'm just trusting the holy ghost is going to anoint them how many of you have never heard the riverdale mass youth choir i mean most of us then they were here back in 2009 i think we had them last and uh, hopefully you'll get to come back and hear them on Friday night, 7 o'clock. And then Saturday afternoon, young people, you're going bowling or something of that nature. So make sure you know where you're supposed to be. Saturday night, there'll be a youth service or a youth emphasis service. We're hoping moms and dads will bring them and come and support them. And then Sunday, Brother Jonathan will be with us as well. So let's have a good turnout for all weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I didn't mention this this morning, but uh, can you believe we're talking about Mother's Day already? Amen. And uh, two weeks from yesterday will be our annual Mother's Event. That'll be Saturday, May the 2nd. That'll be the Saturday before we leave for Alaska. And uh, changing it up just a little bit this year. It'll start at 1030 in the morning. And it'll start in this building. Uh, Sister Hanks is our guest speaker. And she will be the one bringing the, uh, the message, if you will, the devotion, the speaking. Don't dare tell her I said message. She'll tell you she's not a preacher. But I've been around Sister Judy Hanks long enough to know that if it hits her just right, she's going to share. Amen. And she has something on her heart. And so this has worked out uh, for all for her to be here and for you ladies to be here. So you'll have to start at 1030 that morning for a time of, of uh, I'm going to say of worship and things of that nature. She's going to be pouring into you. And then you'll get to go and eat in the fellowship hall. So uh, we're just going to plan. Uh, Rebecca said, are we doing a tab for this? I said, nope, we're planning for 80. Just tell them to come on. Amen. And uh, so uh, we want you here, and uh, I'm hoping uh, by you not having to fill a tab out that says I'm coming doesn't mean you won't come. Just know we're preparing for you, and uh, we want you to be here and your kids and your girls and your daughters and granddaughters and daughters-in-law and daughters and outlaw and all that stuff. Bring them all. Amen. And uh, I can tell you, Sister Hanks will definitely pour into them, and uh, I believe that they'll leave here encouraged and then a nice meal together. And I need some of you men to help me. It is always our job to serve the ladies on that day. And uh, the good thing about this year is we'll, we'll get to work back there while they're in church and can have everything almost T-top ready. And we're going to look good this year. And uh, we're going to try our best anyhow. Amen. So some of you students that want to help me, some of you men, I need you. And uh, what are we eating yet? I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. The first lady hasn't spoken that to me yet. Um, but when she does, I will listen. And uh, But no, uh, we want to make sure that you're here for that, and we'll try our best to mention it next Sunday. And then don't forget about flocking. If you need uh, your neighbor's house flocked, um, youth fundraiser, we launched that this morning. And uh, some of you are wanting to buy your insurance policies tonight where you don't get flocked. You better get them in early. I got a list. And uh, it's going to our U-turn student ministries to help them with some of the fundraising they need to do. So uh, make sure you see Pastor Rebecca and... Um, you never know, those 24 flamingos might show up at your yard tonight. Amen. You never know. So uh, we'll, they'll be leaving. Oh, yeah, there they are. My office got flocked uh, on Friday. And so, uh, yep, that was about my look because I was not expecting it. And uh, But we're looking for a good time doing this. So uh, you never know. Uh, you might get flocked. How do I prevent my house from getting flocked? You buy enough insurance that nobody will outbid you. And um, some of you, I would pay quite a bit of money to flock you. So, hope your insurance policy is good. Amen. But any questions on that, see Pastor Rebecca. All right. Ushers, and uh, if you'll come tonight, get ready to wait upon the, Lord, upon the church as we give to the Lord. And uh, they told me I was in the kitchen about 5 o'clock, and there was a couple of items back there. 
Um, the couple that were back there were good enough to take. Amen. I didn't take them, but I could have. But I checked in with the first lady, and she says, oh, I think we got 18 or 19, 19 items back there. So uh, we're going to leave. Um, somebody's going to leave blessed tonight. So make sure you stay. And uh, our very own auctioneer, Pastor Michael Bishop Reverend Renfro, uh, will be our auctioneer tonight. And we'll see how much fun he can have and uh, see what we can do for the heart of Florida Youth Ranch. Let's give tonight as giving to the Lord. Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the privilege we have to be a Christian. Thank you for the plan of salvation. Bless this offering tonight. Multiply it for the needs of our church. Thank you, Lord, for all the families that are represented here. Just strengthen us, guide us, and direct us. And let us give to you with a cheerful heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. music I have asked them to prepare this for tonight and my heart as we are continuing to refocus on those four areas in front of you tonight faith family fellowship and finances I cannot forget that heaven itself rejoices when one sinner comes to know Jesus as their savior the Bible says the angels in heaven rejoice over one I still believe it's our job and our responsibility to go out and find the one and tonight, I'm going to hopefully allow us to focus on that just for a moment. And um, just felt after we have finished our sixth week of campaign, after we have finished those specific areas of ministry focus, uh, that that's not all. God's called us to more. God continues to call us. And uh, I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to use the Sunday night crowd, the Sunday night services, to, to do this part. And I'm going to read some scripture and ask you to be in an attitude of prayer. But then we're going to put our faith into action. Hopefully God will allow us to reach somebody this week. Do they have to wait till Sunday to get saved? Oh, no, they don't. But if they're here on Sunday, they have a better chance of getting saved than not. If they're not here, can you say amen? I can tell you 100% of the people that are not here on Sunday morning won't get saved at this altar that Sunday morning. But if they're in the building that Sunday morning, they have a greater chance getting saved during that service now they didn't get saved on the side of the road i believe that but our job is to rejoice when they do and our job is to go find as christ has luke chapter number 15 is where we'll be reading from don't have it for you on the screen tonight what manner of you having a hundred sheep if you lose one of them doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it and when he had found it he layeth on his shoulders rejoicing and when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and ninety just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth, piece, doth not light a candle, sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it 
And when she had found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. And I will arise and go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. And he had compassion and ran, fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Father, we come before you tonight. We ask that the words of the Lord will stir our heart. God, that we will realize there is importance in leaving the 90 and 9 and going for the 1. God, there is importance in knowing that the 9 pieces of coins are safe. But Lord, there is a lesson implied from the Word of God that it is proper to light a candle and to seek diligently and to find that one lost coin that has been lost. Lord, I pray tonight as we are sensitive to your spirit. God, and I bring us to a point of this service where we are focusing on the harvest. God, souls are dying. Men are crying. Hell has enlarged itself. God, and I believe we have biblical instruction. Biblical, Lord, uh, instruction tonight that it is proper to go after that one. Lord, I'm reminded of the, Lord, the, the verses of the young son. The prodigal, as we have called him so many times, that gathered his things and left. God, and when he hit bottom, he decided he would go back to daddy's house. But God, I love what the scriptures say when it says that while he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion on him, ran and kissed him and loved him. Father, and I believe that father that we read about in this scripture, Look in parallel to Jesus standing there with his arms open wide waiting for lost sons and lost daughters of the kingdom of God to find their way to Calvary. Lord, we're reminded the angels in heaven rejoice over one. Lord, it doesn't have to be 50. We don't have to have 100. Lord, the Bible said that heaven itself rejoices over one sinner. Lord, that gives their heart to the Lord. Lord, I pray this week as we put our faith in the action. Lord, as we take a bold step, Lord, in just a few moments and we stand before this altar, God, that you'll give us somebody this week. God, that you'll give us somebody this week that we can, Lord, that we can be a light to. Lord, that we can seek diligently after. That we can go and find God. Lord, that we can help bring them to the house of the Lord. For we know that when they get here, Jesus will be waiting for them. Jesus is wanting and Jesus is calling and Jesus is asking. Lord, in heaven itself, we'll stand at attention and we'll celebrate for each and every one that comes to the family of God. We thank you for that tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I'm going to ask you tonight if you would stand with me across this building. Oh, we're not done. There's people that need Jesus. Oh, we're not done. 
Our refocus campaign is not over. There's people that we come in contact with every single day that need to be saved. I'm reminded of that shepherd that went and found that one. That lady who lost a coin. She had the nine, but she diligently searched till she found that one. Tonight, I'm going to ask you to take a bold step. We're going to do it right now. I ask you to say, Pastor, if God will help me this week, I'm going to do my very best to invite somebody to come to church with me this Sunday. Why? Because they need to belong to the Father. They need to know what it is to be a part of the family of God. They need to know what it is to, to come out from among the world and be born again. I'm going to ask you tonight, if you'll do that with me, say, Pastor, I'll do my very best. If God will allow me and God will help me and give me the words to say, I'll invite somebody. We're going to do this for a while because I believe if we keep it in front of us, we realize the importance of it, that men are dying, souls are crying. It's our job to reach them. We do this. I believe God will reward our efforts, reward our sincerity and our honesty. I'm going to ask you tonight, if you would do that, would you come? Just line up across the front of this church. I'm going to pray quickly with everyone and ask God to give you direction. Anybody tonight, Pastor, I'll do my very best to invite somebody. Cherry, come all the way to the front. Just leave me room to get right here. Stand right in front of the altars, right in front of the altars. Pastor, there's somebody I can invite. There's somebody I know that needs Jesus. Oh, there's somebody that I know that needs Jesus. Why do we do this on a Sunday night? Because church, there's still people that need to be saved that we come in contact with. And you're not making a commitment to me. You're making a commitment to the Lord. You're not committing to pastor. I won't ask you next week, did you invite somebody? But you're making a commitment before the altar of the Lord to do your very best. And if we don't come in contact with anybody this week, we'll have another opportunity next week. But here's what I believe happens. When you leave this place knowing that you've made a commitment to God, you're going to be looking for somebody to invite. Oh, they might tell you no, but I'm still going to invite them. They might, not, they might tell you, yes, I'll be there. And they might not show up next Sunday, but you're still going to invite them. Why? Because if we don't help them, who's going to? If we don't help pull them out of the grip of Satan, who's going to? Tonight, would you take your neighbor by the hand? I am overwhelmed by those that have responded to this, to this invitation. I'm overwhelmed by it. You're going to do your part, but I can tell you the Lord will do His part. Let's pray tonight, asking God to specifically give you somebody this week to invite to church on Sunday. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we pray for every individual that's represented in this altar tonight. God, they've not made a commitment to me. They've not made a commitment to the church of God. God, tonight we're making a commitment to you. We're making a commitment to the God that sits high upon the throne. Lord, and I pray tonight that we will not take this commitment lightly, but we will realize it is a commitment before the altar of the Lord. God, that we will invite somebody. God, that we will go get them. That we will be here to meet them. Lord, that we'll do our part to, to diligently seek for that one that is lost. To diligently seek for that one that needs to be saved. Lord, to diligently seek for that lost sheep that's been, that's been left by the wayside. Help us tonight, I pray, God. Lord, these students, touch them this week. Moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, uh, touch them this week, God, and give them favor and let them see the results, uh, Lord, of them making a commitment tonight uh, in the house of the Lord, uh, God, that they will go and they will invite uh, and we will see souls born uh, into the kingdom of God. Lord, I believe your word does not return void. God, I believe it's true and I believe it's accurate. God, and I believe if we follow this principle even this week, God, that you're going to give us men and women for the kingdom of God. Bless them this week. Oh, the enemy will fight them, but greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. Lead us now, I pray. We will forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Everybody said amen. And amen. Remember your commitment. Not to me, but to the Lord. Amen.
Let's do our part to seek that one this week. Keep playing, Sister Wendy, while they return to their seat. Hallelujah. continue the Lord with our worship uh, worship the Lord with uh, Sophia DeLong as she comes and ministers to us in song so just worship the Lord with her as she sings tonight comes my way and when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand or fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay God, how I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. 
restlessness, oh God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. How we need thee every hour. We need God. We need his touch. We need his presence. We need his anointing. Hallelujah. As we've been working on this refocus campaign, we've been looking at faith and family and fellowship and finances. Faith, we must have the Lord Jesus Christ in our heart and our life. That's the center of it. Got to have faith and family, each and of us, our family. We're all part of the family of God. We're a bunch of families all together making a family of God. So we're all a part of the family. We have fellowship one with another. Well, that's why I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight is fellowship. But we've got to have the finances. We've got to have the tithes and offering in order that we can keep on doing what we do. I want to talk to you a few minutes tonight about fellowship. In order for us to have fellowship, we must have fellowship. You must have a friend. You must have someone to fellowship with. You must have someone to commune with. You must have someone to react to, someone to uh, talk to and communicate. And this is part of fellowship. And in the fellowship in the church, uh, we have the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the center of it all. And he gives us family binding together and united together in one mind and accord. And we have fellowship in our hearts and fellowship in our lives. Tomorrow... Ten years ago, my mom passed away. I'm going to dedicate this message tonight to her in memory of her. I love my mom more than anything in the world. My mom was my best friend. If your mom is alive today, you need to let her know every day how much you appreciate your mom. How much she means to you because you never know when she's not here again. I miss my mom every day. Every day since ten years ago, I've missed my mom. I love my mom more than anything, and I miss her. So today, the, tomorrow's her anniversary of being gone, and I want to dedicate this to her tonight. One thing that was important to her is prayer. Fellowship with God is praying. So I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about praying to God. My mom would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, every morning, to pray. She felt the importance and she knew the importance of prayer. And in our hearts and our lives, we must realize the importance of prayer. We must import, uh, realize it's important if we want this church to continue. We must have prayer in the church. Pa Roger was teaching this in Sunday school this morning as we began a series on the book of Acts today. And we'll be teaching it on the next six weeks. We'll be looking in the first 15 chapters of Acts. So you need to be in Sunday school for the next six weeks as we look at the book of Acts and we look and see what God did through the apostles and what God did through the power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and our lives. But what we looked at this morning and what Roger talked to us this morning is about the power of prayer, them being in one mind, being in one accord, being in one. And so that's what I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about prayer. And I want to go to the book of Psalms, the Old Testament, chapter 91, and look at prayer tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray tonight that you would anoint your word tonight. Pray that you would look into Psalms 91 and we look at prayer tonight. I pray that you'd anoint tonight, that you would empower tonight, that you would feel tonight, Lord. Father, Lord, let your word to be accomplished tonight, Lord. Let you to achieve everything you would have us to receive tonight. But most of all, let us realize the importance of prayer, the importance of communion with you, the importance of spending time with you, having a relationship with you. Having a relationship with you is more important than any other thing in this world. We must have a relationship with you tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you'd help us with it and touch us with it. And anoint this preacher tonight. Give me the touch that makes preaching easy, the things that you put into my heart, the things that you put into my life. I pray, Lord, that you touch it and bless it and anoint it, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to read Psalms 91. 
I want to look at the whole chapter tonight, but I'm not going to have you standing for the whole reading tonight. We want to read a little bit, and then we'll let you sit down. It's Psalms 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. He that dwelleth in the secret place. I want to talk to you tonight about dwelling in the secret place. Dwelling in the secret place. You may be seated. Dwelling in the secret place. It says, as, a, so if, as you look at this and you look at the commentaries and they tell you that some, of the, some people think this scripture here was written by the psalmist David and some of it think that it was written by Moses. Uh, verse chapter 9, he was written by Moses as he was uh, telling about the children of Israel and how that God had delivered them and touched them. And then leading up to 91, he was uh, continuing with this thought. And then some of them think that psalmist David may have wrote it. It doesn't ra really rattle today who wrote it. It just rattles today the, the importance of the heart. Because we know, first of all, that it was written by God. God breathed unto them, whoever it was David or whoever it was Moses. God breathed into them this message, and God breathed into them. So we want to look at it and dwell it and learn it in our hearts and our lives today. He that dwelleth in the secret place. What does it mean tonight to dwell? He that dwells in the secret place. Dwells, I like to picture it as a pitching a tent in God's presence. He that pitches a tent in God's presence. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Pitching a tent, uh, putting everything else aside, getting everything aside. When my mom would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, she would go into her closet and you pray. And you could hear her all over the room. I, my room was all the way across the room from all the way across the house from her. There was a, my mom and dad's room was on the left side by theirself, and then mine and my two brothers was on the right side. And we could hear her every morning at 4 o'clock in that prayer meeting in that closet praying and in our hearts and our lives we must realize the importance of him he that pitches his tent in God's presence he that finds a place to get along with God he that finds a place a secret place the Lord Jesus Christ said that we must find a secret place we must find a place that we can get along with God and spend time with him in our heart and life if we want power in our life we must have prayer in our life we want healing in our life. We must have prayer in our life. We want deliverance in our heart. We must have prayer in our life. If we want miracles of God. We must have prayer in our life. We want miracles in this church. We must have prayer in this church. There's power in prayer. There's anointing in prayer. There's blessings in prayer. And oh God, why don't we pray more? Oh God, teach us how to pray. Oh God, teach us how to pray. Oh God, give us a desire to pray. Oh God, give us a desire to pray. So we look at this scripture today. We look at this scripture. There's some things that we can learn from this scripture as a psalmist speaks to us or Moses speaks to us. Uh, whoever, which, which one of them wrote it, the, the writer of this, he's teaching to us and he's telling us, uh, he that dwells in the secret place. There's a secret place. And in that secret place is where you get along with God you put everything else aside. You put away your cell phone. You put away your texts. You put away all your devices. You put. That's what come. My mom used to go into her closet, and she would go into the closet and shut that door. And she would do it at four o'clock in the morning because no one would bother at four o'clock the morning the phone wouldn't ring at four o'clock in the morning you got it and the, the scripture says early in the morning will I seek him and in our hearts and our lives it's very important that we start the day early by spending time with him in prayer he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God you realize that our God is the most high God 
He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's the awesome God. He's the mighty God. He's the powerful God. We realize that we have an honor and a privilege to come before his presence. We don't deserve to come before his presence. What we deserve is death and hell and punishment. But through God's love, sending his son, Jesus Christ to us, he made a way that we can enter to the holy of holies. We can enter into his presence and we can get into his presence. We can get into that secret place. We can get into his presence and spend time with him in prayer. He that dwelleth, he that pitches his tent, he that abides in his presence in the secret place of the Most High God. If you do that, what will you do? He that dwells, he that pitches his tents in God's presence shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In order for you to be under the shadow of something, You've got to be close to it. When it's hot during the day, you're outside working in it, you like to find a shade where there's some shade. In order for you to find shade, you've got to get under the shadow of a tree, a shadow of the building, a shadow of it. In order for you to be underneath the shadow of it, you've got to be close to it. When you're in the secret place of the Most High God, He says you shall abide under the shadow. If we want to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, we've got to be close to the Almighty. We've got to be near to God. The scripture says, draw near to God, and I will draw near unto you. We need to be drawn near to Him. We need to be close to Him. And He said, if we make up our mind and make up our heart that we will dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know that's a privilege? Do you know that's an honor to abide under the shadow of the Almighty? What is the privileges of this? Listen to this. The writer of this says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. And my fortress, a refuge and a fortress is a shelter. A refuge and a fortress is a place where we can have comfort. A place where we can have safety in the time of storm or in the time of uh, difficulty, in the time of life in our hearts and our lives. Uh, we got to have a refuge. We got to have a ref uh, fortress. Uh, around here, we have hurricanes quite a bit. And at hurricanes, you got when a hurricane comes, you got to find you a closet. You got to find you somewhere to get to, away from the glass, away from the trees, away from everything. You find you a place. You go to get in the bathtub. You go get in this place. And what this is? This is a fortress. This is a refuge for you in the time of the storm. And if we abide in God's presence, we abide in Him, and we uh, abide in Him. When storm comes in our life, when difficulty comes in our lives, uh, you know what? He becomes, he says, I will make the Lord my refuge and my fortress. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. I want to look at this scripture in a different way today. As you know, as the Lord Jesus Christ started His ministry, one thing that was very important to him was prayer. And the one thing that he said as he began his ministry, after he got baptized, he was led into the wilderness to pray. And there he was tempted of the Lord. And one of the, and this is in Matthew chapter 4, you can see this where he was tempted. And one of the scriptures, one of the times when Satan came to him, he took the scripture from this place right here. So this scripture here we can apply. This chapter here we can apply to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our fortress. Jesus Christ is our shelter. Jesus Christ is our refuge. Jesus Christ is everything that we knew. He that dwelleth in the secret place. That's how come Jesus knew that he had to find him a secret place. He had to find him a wilderness. He had to find him some place where he could get along with God. And while he was alone with God, the devil came to tempt him. The devil came to tempt him. But what did Jesus do every time he was tempted? He said, Thus saith the Lord God Almighty. 
And as you look in the, li- in the life of Jesus Christ, you will see he was always getting away from them. He was finding them a place of prayer. He would go up the mountain to pray. He would go into the desert to pray. He would go to get along from everybody else to find them a place to pray because he knew the importance of prayer. And if Jesus thinks it's important that to pray, how much more do you think that we're going to follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ that we need to pray in our hearts and our lives. Jesus realized the importance of prayer and spending time with him. Then how much more time do we need to spend time with God in prayer? Spend time with the Heavenly Father in prayer. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. We see here that we get divine protection. We get divine protection by being in God's presence. God's presence brings you protection. Protection is the fortress. The protection is the fortress. He gives you protection. And in verse 3, he says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisance pestilence. God will deliver you. God will deliver you no matter what you go through. Verses 3 through 8, we see verse number 2 was divine protection. Number 3 and through 8 is divine providence. Surely he shall cover thee. Shall he shall deliver thee from the snail of thy fowler and from the noisance pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the hour arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy right hand. At thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy hands shalt thou behold and see the wicked, the reward of the wicked. As the Lord Jesus was there in prayer, he was there in that wilderness in prayer, and the devil was tempting him. The devil was trying his best to destroy him. We see these things here. He said that he covered thee with his feather. He covers thee with his feather and under wings, his wings uh, shalt thou trust. What are you trusting in today? What are you trusting in today? If we're we're trusting in our country, we're in trouble. If we're trusting in the bank, we're in trouble. If we're trusting in the doctors, we're in trouble. If we're trusting in the things of this world, we're in trouble. But if we trust in God, God is our present help in trouble. And he will help us and he will be our divine protection and our divine providence. Listen to this. I was was reading this and studying this. I I, I was reading it and and I got down to this verse of verse 9. And it said, He that dwelleth in the secret place. And it said, I will say of these things and all these things. Then it said in verse 9, Because, why does God do all these things? He's, you look at this. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God, all of these things will God, He will be your protection. He will be your provider. And then He goes on to say, Because. Why? Because thou hast made the Lord your refuge. If you make a commitment in your heart and your life that you're going to have a relationship with God, you're going to spend time with Him in prayer, you're saying, because God is my refuge, God is my refuge, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Look at this. He said in verse 1, He that dwelleth in the, in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And now in verse 9, he says, Because thou hast made the Lord thy God thy refuge, even thy Most High God thy habitation. Let me ask you a question today. What are you dwelling in? What is your habitation? What is the center of your mind, the center of your heart? 
What are you dwelling in? He that dwelleth in the secret place. Uh, he that maketh God his habitation. What is your habitation? I cried tonight, what is our habitation? I've been crying and praying this week. I said, oh God, let me be drawn closer to you. Let me to have a desire for you and a hunger for you and a thirst for you that you might be my habitation. If we have a desire to be in his habitation, he will come and be there with you. Because why does all of these things happen? Because he said, he dwelleth in the secret place. And then he said, because thou hast made the Lord the refuge, even the most high thy habitation. Because you do this, now let's see what's going to happen. There shall no evil befall thee. Listen to this. Neither shall any plague come on nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. When you look at his Jesus is in the wilderness and he was tempted the three times and then the devil left him because he, he come against him with the scripture everything. What happened to him? It says the angels of the Lord came and ministered to him. This is where we can see that this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. After he was tempted, he says, The angels of the Lord came and he will give his charge over thee. And if we want God's protection, we want God's anointing, we want God's angels, we want God's fortress, we want God's, then we must have God's habitation. We must have God's dwelling place in the secret place of the Most High God in order to get all of these things. And if you get these things, he said, you shall have your angels all about you. There there be sickness all about you. Though there be everything around you, disease around you, and you shall not come nigh your dwelling. Why? Because he gives his angels charge over thee. That's how come we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid of sickness. We don't have to be afraid of disease. Uh, that's how come because uh, he gives his angels charge over thee. Though there's uh, a disease all around us, he says, if you put your faith and your trust in God, it shall not come nigh you. In America, this is what America needs to focus on. Getting down on our knees and calling out to God. The only source, the only hope for America, the only source, and the only hope for this nation is that this amazing, this nation would fall down on its knees and cry unto the Lord God like the forefathers of the founding fathers of our nation did. They cried out to God and asked God for help and in our hearts and our lives unless we realize that we need Him. We must pray to God and ask God to help us and be our refuge and be our fortune and be our shelter and be our help and let His angels come nigh us and guard around us because none of these things shall happen to us. If we have God's protection and God's anointing, His habitation upon our hearts and our lives, there shall no evil, evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For He shall give His uh, charge, angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon, which thou hast trampled upon under feet. When you think about this, in verse 1 it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under will put his way be under his wings and now he tells us we got angels listen to this praying and spending time with God you get number one you get divine protection from God we get a shadow we get underneath his wings but the next benefit is that we get angels to guard after us and lift us up and help us and protect us. Aren't you glad for God's protecting angels in our heart and our life? We need God. We need Jesus. We need angels. In order for us to have these, we must spend time with him and find a secret place. Let me propose a question to you. If you don't spend time in the secret place, we can't Expect these blessings upon our heart and our life. If we don't pray, 
If we don't spend time in His presence, if we don't spend our time in the habitation of the Most High God, we can't expect God's feathers to hide us, His, His shadow to hide us. We can't expect His angels to protect us. But if we get down and we find a relationship and we spend time with Him, we can expect these things in our heart and our life. I want to propose something to you. If you're not praying in your heart, you're not praying in your life, you're not doing these things and spending time with Him, you need to pray. We need to pray every day. We need to get up and pray every day, whether you pray in the morning, whether you pray at night. We need to spend time with His presence every day. And if we don't do that, we're talking about relationship. We talk about fellowship. If you want to be a friend, someone, you want a relationship, you've got to know something about them. You've got to spend time with them. You've got to spend time with them and talking to them and computing them. If you don't talk to them, you don't compute with them, you don't know them. If we don't talk to God, if we don't talk to the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have the Holy Spirit filling our heart and doing us with power from on high, unless we spend time with Him every day in our heart and our life. We need Him in our life. And He leads us in our heart. I was reading this. I found another because. He that dwelleth in the secret place, the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then in verse 9 it says, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. First of all, we see He must be our secret place. Second, he must be our habitation. And listen to this. Because he has set his love upon me, there will I deliver him. Where is your love today? What is your love set upon today? Is your love set upon God? Is your love set upon the things of this world? What is your love set upon? He said, because he has set his love upon upon me what do you have your love upon today what are you applying your love to what are you setting your love upon he says because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he hath, done, he hath known my name do you know God's name what is your love set upon what do you focus on in your heart? What do you focus on in your life? What is your focus? What is your love showed upon? What are you dedicating your heart and your life to? What are you spending the time in your life doing? Where are you showing your love to? Are you showing it to love by, to God by spending time with Him in prayer and in the Word of God? Or are we spending time with it on the computer, playing games, or on the TV, watching TV? Where are we setting our love to? Do we know His name? Do we know time? Do we spend time with Him to know His name? Do you know His name? Do you want Him to know your name? If you don't talk to Him, if you don't fellowship with Him, if you don't commune to him, he might forget your name. God knows all things. But if you don't call upon him in a long time, we forget. If we don't hear from our friends in a long time, sometimes we forget them. Do you want God to forget you? Of course, we know God doesn't forget anything, but I'm just using this as illustration. Do you want God to forget you? If you don't spend time, when I say you, I say we Talking about myself, and the Lord's been convicting me. Lord, we're dealing with me. The Lord, we can't preach a message unless the Lord deal with you. And the Lord's been dealing with me. Ricky, you need to spend time with me in prayer. You need to do the example that your mother gave you. Spending time with him in prayer. If we want power in our heart, we want power in our life. We must spend time in prayer. We looked into Sunday school this morning. In the book of Acts, it said, everywhere they went, they brought miracles. But well, what did they do? They spent time with the Lord in prayer. They spent time together. They spent time with the Lord in prayer. If we want power in our life, we want anointing in our life, we want victories in our life, we want miracles in our life, what we must do is spend time with the Lord in prayer. 
and in his word. We've got to have this fellowship. We've got to have this communion. We've got to have this in our heart and our life. So reading this, every time you read the Bible, you see something different. I've never seen these becauses in there as I've read them before. I was reading this weekend, and he said, Because, because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the Most High God, thy habitation. Why does God deliver you? Why does God send his angels to you? Why does he do all these? Because your desire, your love is set upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Set upon God. Set upon him. Set upon him because you have set his love toward him. He that dwelleth in the secret place. And he that has made God his habitation. And number three is he that has set his love toward God. If you want God's divine presence, if you want God's divine providence, you want God's divine rewards, you want God's divine protection upon our lives, then we must spend time with the Lord in prayer and make Him our habitation. I will set Him on high because He hath known my name. Listen to this. He shall call upon you. And I will answer him. What he's talking about now is when you have trouble, when you have difficulties, he says, when they call upon me, I will answer him. I will help him in trouble. I will deliver him. And I will honor him. If we wait till we get in trouble to pray to God, we're in trouble. He says, I will answer. He shall call on me upon me and I will answer. Who will he answer? Those that pitches his tents in God's presence. Those that finds him a closet to spend time with the Lord in prayer. Those that has the God, the Almighty, his habitation. Those that has set his love upon him. When you have trouble, then you can go to God and ask God, Lord, I'm in trouble. I need you to help me. Lord, I have difficulties in my heart. I have difficulties in my life. I have difficulties. Then we can have the assurance that when we come to God, he says, I will answer you. Too many times in our life, too many times in our heart, the only time we pray is when we're in trouble. The only time we ask God for something is when we're in trouble, when we need a need, when we have a situation, when we have, this is not what God wants for us. God wants us to have a relationship with Him. Faith, family, fellowship. Fellowship with the divine. Fellowship with God. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with Him. Spending time with Him in prayer. Spending time with Him, communion with Him. Spending time with Him. And then he said that when you call upon me, I will answer. He did not say I might answer. He did not say maybe I'll answer, I'll think about it. He said I will answer. Why? Because you made time in your heart. You made time in your life to spend time with him in prayer. And he says I will deliver him in trouble. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and will show him my salvation. We don't understand everything that happens in our life. We don't understand everything. My mom was only 62 years old when she died. That's young. And I read this scripture and I said, Lord, God, Mother made you her habitation. She spent time with you. She done these things. And it says here, I will satisfy him and shall, with long life shall I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Long life. Promise of long life. 62 years is not a long time. It's young. And this bothered me for a long time. I said, Lord, why did you take her so early? She loved you. 
she, she loved you. She loved spending time with you. She loved teaching Sunday school and teaching your word. She loved doing these things. It says, with long life will I satisfy him and will I show him my salvation. You know what? She's got long life now. Took me a long time to realize this. But she's got everlasting life now. Because she had salvation, she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. She had that faith in Him and believed in Him. So we know that she is the Him, the God, as her salvation. Because I know that He's salvation, I know that she has everlasting life, and it's not everlasting damnation because she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. With long life will I satisfy Him and will show Him my salvation. As we close, let me ask you, what is your habitation? What is your focus on? Our theme has been refocus, and pastor has been trying to get us to refocus. What is your focus on? What is your heart? The Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, that we should put God first in everything. What is your focus? Sister Wendy, come on to the piano. What is your focus on today? What is your focus on today? What has been your habitation? What has been where you're spending time? Where you're spending the majority of your time? Are you spending more time watching TV than you are spending with God in prayer and reading the Word? Are you spending more time on the computer than you are on the internet than on Facebook than you are spending with God, with time with the Lord in prayer and praying in the Holy Ghost and reading the Word of God? Refocus. We need to examine our hearts and examine our lives today. What are you focused on? We want God's protection. We want God's shelter. We want all of these things that He happens, that happens to us in our hearts and our lives. So He's protection. But he's telling us if you don't dwell in God's presence, you don't have him as your habitation, your love is not set upon him, we cannot expect these things in our heart and our life. Examine your heart. Examine your life today. What are you focusing on? What has been your focus? 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 What are you spending your time on? What is for you spending the majority of your time on? We need to make a dedication in our heart and our life that we're going to spend time with the Lord in prayer. Oh God, let us spend time with you in prayer. As you spend time with God in prayer, you know what God does? He gets rid of our weaknesses. He gets rid of our sin. He gets rid of the things in our heart. That's like a lot of time we don't want to spend time with the Lord in prayer because the Holy Spirit begins to deal with your heart and deal with your life. And when God begins to deal, we get afraid and we run away from Him. But don't run away from God. When you're in God's presence and you're praying, let the Holy Spirit deal with your heart. Let the Holy Spirit deal with your life. Let Him convict you of things. Let Him burn things out of your heart and burn things out of your life. That's the Holy Spirit working to mold you and make you into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us stand. We need to spend time with the Lord in prayer. We need to make a commitment. In the name of Jesus, family, fellowship, finances. Tonight we need to refocus our fellowship on the divine. Let God be the center of our attention. Let God to be what we're focused on and spend time with Him and the Lord in prayer. Doesn't matter the trouble you have in your heart and your life today, He's your healer. He's the mighty God. He's the awesome God. He's the powerful God. He's the mighty God. Let us come and spend some time around the altar today. Let us make a commitment to God. Say, Lord, I want to spend time with you every day in prayer. You say, Pastor, I want to make that commitment. 
that I want to know him more than I would ever known him before. I want to have that protection. I want to have that angels of God around me. I want to set my love upon him. Let's make that commitment today and say, let's make a commitment to him that we're going to spend time with him. Ha.
Oh, if you know it, sing it one time with her. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for these that have come around the altars of the Lord. God, those that have lingered in your presence, God, realize it. there's something to be said about those, God, that want to dwell in the secret place. God, don't let us just go through a routine. Lord, even as I mentioned this morning, don't let it be a formality what we do every day, but let it be out of a sincere heart. God, let us realize there is no replacement for prayer, God. Lord, responsibilities and obligations, Lord, and even the work of the ministry, Lord, does not replace our time in prayer. Strengthen us, God, and let us have a desire to spend that quality time with you as our Lord and as our Savior. Thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord tonight. Go with us, Lord, I pray, and let everything we do this week Lord, be done in decency and in order and done to give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Do you still believe in prayer? Do you believe in the importance of prayer? Hallelujah. I'll leave this with you. If we follow you around, daylight to dark, would you be guilty of spending prayer time with the Lord? I believe it's that important. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ricky. Thank you for being with us tonight. Those on the internet, thank you for being with us, joining us. We're going to transition to the fellowship hall, and as soon as the auctioneer gets there, we're going to start. And uh, we want to go ahead and get started tonight. A lot of cakes, a lot of items to get through. So let's find our way over there tonight. God bless you. We'll see you in just a few moments. <laughs>